Morning, everybody. It's David here at Becker Art, and um, we're going to be doing a little practicing on a lady sitting in a window. And I'm back from Florida, and actually, there's actually no snow on the ground. I can't believe it. I left here um, about two weeks ago, went to Florida, and it seems like um, all the snow melted that was down here. And it, actually, I could have went out today. I actually could have done a plain air here. It wasn't that cold, and I, it's still in like the close to the 40s, but I could have been out there today. Uh, I kind of miss being outside um, doing the plain air, but um, I'm going to do this one instead. And basically, it's just a um, lady in the window, and I changed it up a little bit from the drawing, and um, I actually had I had AI take off her hat. She had a hat on, and um, hey, hey, Mary Beth, hey, Maria, hey, Sue. And so we're going to get started. And I'm, what I'm doing today is I'm doing it on a board. I'm going to start trying to do everything on boards or panels that I made. This is um, 11 by 14. Um, 11 this way, 14 across. And so that's the standard size. And so it'll be, you can put that right into a, a frame. Uh, this week, I'm gonna, and it's crescent, as you can see. It's a crescent board. Um, Holbein, I mean, not Holbein, but um, Legion is making panels, but they're not out yet. And so... Um, once they get out, I'm going to start using the, the Legion panels uh, with the Stonehenge paper, but they haven't, they're not out yet. They're coming. They're very, they keep on telling me that they're, they're very soon. And that's going to be aluminum panels. That's going to be kind of neat. And so again, I don't tape it. And so, okay. So I, I don't know if I ever showed you the guys this trick when you, when you're drawing and you get too much heavy, get too heavy with your lead. Um, I take a needle rubber eraser. And what I do is I just roll it. I make a rolling pin out of the needle rubber eraser and I take it over the painting. <clears throat> I may have shown this many years ago, but it just picks up the graphite. And so that the graphite, the line stays, but the graphite goes away so that it doesn't um, wreck and make your light colors you know, bad. Because basically it's a gray, right? It's a gray pigment that's on there. And so I just roll it. And it gets on the needle rubber eraser pretty well. And that's why they you need it to clean it. And so I'm just going to clean it here a little bit. Hey, Pamela. Hey, Pat. And um, yeah, it's probably as cold as it was down in Florida in the mornings as it is here this morning. This morning is actually very nice outside. I went out to get my pellet and I had to refill a bunch of stuff. I still have to fill my white, but I, you can just tell I filled up my palette again this morning. All right, so we're ready to go. And again, we start with our lights. And after doing this, like if I were doing this and she was actually sitting there, um, I would do the same thing, you know, if I was there or if it was, this was like a model and I had him sitting there, I would still start it the same way. I wouldn't do any different. The drawing, of course, it takes you a little bit longer. And I'm going to just show you if you want to do this, I'm going to, I'm going to, widen the picture just in case you want to have a screenshot of the picture so there's the picture and um the ha the head had a she had a beanie on and so i just had ai take it off of course she's a redhead <laughs> and um we had boots on her it, 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 she had these black boots on but it kind of matches the leather and she had a beanie on and so what i had done is i asked ai to maybe take these boots off but they, she, they made it really weird shoes, and I, I thought, okay, the boots are okay, the boots are fine, and um, but the beanie was just kind of, um, you know, it was just a really, really weird beanie. I wanted to see her hair too, and I also like how it gave the highlight around it because the sunshine is just shining right here, uh, around her head, and right there by her knee. And where's my, where's my little pointer? Where are you, pointer? Hold on, let me find my pointer. Okay, the pointer's right here. Let me just bring it up for a second. So right here where this light is, right here by her knee, it looks like you can see through her knee, but that's just her That's just her dress. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and make that a little bit darker and do more of a rim lighting out here and not make it look like you can see through her knee. like her. And she has like really, I think she bumped her knee. It's like really dark right there. <laughs> And she has um, hair in front of her, in front of her face, and I can maybe do a little bit of that. But I'm gonna rim light this, and um, and basically a lot of this is gonna be orange because her hair is gonna be red, and so we're gonna go with orange. A lot of grays. See how there's a lot of grays in here. So I'm gonna kind of keep with the grays. I kind of like that. And so we're going with orange 
and a grayish blue. And so we're going to try that. Let's see how that works. And I, I'm squinting my eye and look at uh, the whole background is my light and the little reflection in the window here um, also is my light and everything else is dark. And so how easy is that going to be to paint? Very simple. Very super simple. All right, I'll bring this back and oh, I don't want to Let's bring that back this way. And so if you want to see it and take a screenshot, that was nice and big for there for you so you can see it. If you want to try it, this is a um, royalty-free image. And so, hey, everybody. Oh, I hope you're okay, <laughs> Caroline. Uh, frost proof. <laughs> hey, Lyle. All right, so let's get going here. So, my, my water's already dirty because I was cleaning my palette, and so my, my water is actually not even <laughs> clear right now. <laughs> so we're going to go into the background and just um, do my background, and it'll be cool because my foreground's going to be warm, and so I'm going to get some cool grays, and so I'll use some lavender, a little bit of lavender. And the buildings back there that you see back there, I'm going to just hint at them. I'm just going to put a little bit of gray back there and go over, over everything. And so to make a gray, what do you add? You make your orange or your yellow and lavender. That makes a gray. Well, maybe a little bit of orange. Too much yellow. Boy, yellow is just so powerful. Or you can use your um, a little bit of black to make it a little bit grayer. And that's kind of green now. So let's go with a little bit of red in there. Warm it up. Then a little bit of blue to cool it down. Which makes you basically use your lavender, right? Your lavender is what's going to make it. So there we go. So here we have a little bit cooler. A little bit cooler gray. So people call that mud. That's not mud. That's a gray, unfortunately to say. A lot of people, are, they mix stuff. They keep on mixing and they go, oh my God, look at that. It's so gray. It's so muddy. It's so muddy. No, that's a great gray. Just keep it. And here I'm just going down and make my nice, nice gray. And it's going to be, um, I don't have to worry about going over them, over the boots or anything, or even over the window panes because that's going to be darker. And so here, this is a little bit lighter, but in here, the buildings. And over here, I'm not going to do the windows yet. I'm not going to do the windows. Maybe I should get the outer edge of the of the head so that it looks like um, the rim lighting. So maybe get a little bit of color. I'll take some orange and yellow. And just put a little bit of that right there where the rim light is going to happen. And at the same time, I can get the edge of the edge of the these parts of the window sill. And that way, that'll be the edge, right? The edge will be nice and bright. A little bit of orange. And you can also put white paint in there later, too. And I was thinking about putting masking fluid, but I'm just not... I don't like masking fluid. I just... Um, it just takes too much time. And you can do the same thing with white paint. And my screen shows that as being very dull yellow. This is really bright orange. So that's just my screen. Each screen is going to have a little difference in the colors and stuff. And that's cool. And there's nothing we can do about that. So here we're going to put a little bit of orange going up. And this is just the light. Again, this is the light that will be on the outside of these windows. Because the sun is hitting the outside or the rim of this. And so I'm, I'm just putting in the rim lighting. I guess I could fill it all in. It really doesn't matter, but i um, just going to put it in like that really quickly. Same thing right here where the light is shining through. And that's, you know, people always ask me, why are the lights first? You know, why do oil painters do the darks first? It's because we're applying the light down so that we can put the dark over it. So that mistakes like the here where the dark part of the leg and the dress will be darker and it'll cover up this light I put on there. That's the only reason. I mean, it's the reason so that it's easier. Um, when oil people oil paint and acrylic paint, they do the they do the darks first because they're putting big heavy amounts of white on top of the dark 
So that's what makes it look cool. It's basically, you're doing it to make it look really, you know, thick, thick white paint. And we're doing it so, because that's the easiest way of doing it and making it work for us. All right, and now in the window, it's gonna reflect the same thing. So in the reflection in the window over here, let's put the same thing of the light area. And because then the light area is done basically, and the rest will be the mediums, the large mediums and the large darks. And so, and why not put a little bit of color in her face right away? Cause her face is actually in the light part. So I'll use a little bit of pink. If you don't have pink, just mix red with white. And I'm taking pink and a little bit of this orange makes it kind of salmon-y. So I'm going to put a little bit of that color in her, in her face. And put a little bit of rosiness into her cheeks. And I'll put, still put shadow there later. Well, I want to do that now with a little bit of her hair color. We'll go into her face a little bit. And a lot of people always save the face for last because it's a face and they think, oh my, God, I'm going to ruin it if I do it now or, or they do it first because if they ruin it, but you really can't think that way. You just have to go in and do your lights first. Whatever's light is more important. So get your lights in there. Here, put a little red, a little dark red in there, shadowing on her face, underneath her chin. I can go into the jacket. The jacket is really dark, right? And so don't worry about the jacket. Reflect a little bit of her hair color into the jacket too, because even though it's dark, it'll reflect into her jacket a little bit. And then her legs, put a little of this um, lighter part. There's blood in her legs, so you put the red, you know, it's... And then the skirt is kind of see-through, it's lacy kind of thing, so you're seeing a little bit of her leg through there, like a shadow. And then right here, the color of her legs. In shadow, this is pretty much in shadow, so I put a little bit of gray in there into the, into the warm. So I'll take a little bit of violet, put that right into my into my dark or into my light colors all right so there's my lights basically that's my lights so now let's go into our large mediums the background the sky is white i'm just going to keep it white i wouldn't make it blue just because it's a sky it's so bright and it's so gray everything back there so i'm just going to keep it that way Later on, I'll do the detail of the windows, even though the windows, I'm not going to make it as dark as in the photo. But actually, it doesn't look bad when you put these windows right there a little bit darker. All right, so let's go with our um, big areas of medium and darks. So first thing that's a little bit lighter is her dress. Her dress is, um, it's kind of pinkish, salmon-y, dirty, dirty salmon color. So I'm going to make start out with a red, a little bit of yellow, making it orangey. A little bit of pink and that means i would also just put a little bit of white in there and that would make it pink too and it's so i can go through everything here um even her jacket so i'll put some water down and this is something i really want to i want to do i have so many things i gotta put into um into my newsletter that i don't know which one to start with <laughs> And uh, one thing I want to do is a difference between tints and washes. And for beginners, there's a tint, which is a lot of water with a little bit of pigment. And there's a wash with uh, the same amount of water, but with a lot of pigment. So I always start out with a tint. I kind of start out with a tint first, putting down a tint of um, color, which is a lot of water, which is a little bit of paint. And that's a tint. And that also makes it smooth by itself because it's just a lot of water and so it'll just smooth itself out. Hey Jane from Mexico, um, thanks for stopping in again this morning. The lower leg, I'm not sure what you're, is it missing the lower leg? Oh yeah, right here, that, that's like I was talking about earlier that the light looks like it's missing there. But it's just the sun is so bright on this dress right there that it looks like it's missing. Like it's all of a sudden it's cut off. 
So I'm going to make that darker so it will not be as bright as that. I'm going to keep the brightness over here. So those are things you look at in your picture. And if they look weird, don't paint them weird. Uh, make it look okay. Don't paint weird stuff, <laughs> I guess you could say. <laughs> don't paint weird stuff. <laughs> You can, you can quote me on that one, <laughs> or don't quote me on that one. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of purple here I'm using, and I'm going to use some purple with the... And this is all wet now, and so I can get soft edges, and I'm going to make the the her dress soft, but there's shadowing right here, and I'm going to be using a lot of grays later on. And so this is going to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to go here and get my soft edges. Boy, this paper, this board is really acting weird. It's, it's like giving me little dots in there. I'm not sure what that's about. Can't wait until Holbein makes their, or not Holbein, but until Legion makes their panels. And so here I'm going to make her leg going back like this so you can see it, the dark. See how you see the dark through there? And that's a combination again of the salmon color I made with a little bit of purple. So pink, pink and orange make a kind of a salmon-y color. And then I, to dull it, I, I just put um, lavender in there. And white makes it kind of pastel -y when you put white together with your colors. And so then we're going to just... And again, this is very wet, so I'm floating all my pigment. Let's take a little bit of dark purple here and put it up in this area. Where it's kind of dark. And the, and the jacket, of course, is going to be almost black, so we're going to go really dark with that. Underneath the book that she's writing on, that's a little bit dark right away. And soft edge. You might as well do it soft edge right now. Again, take a little bit more pigment. And the thicker the pigment, the more you can control it in a wet wash. See, I, I control that by using a lot of water. I tap down on my on my towel here and get rid of the water, but then pick up the pigment to get the edge. All right? I need an edge there. And so it needs to be nice and thick in the wet wash. And you can get the nice edge. You have to learn that as a beginner, you have to learn how to be able to work in a wet wash so that you can create soft edges on their own, but still have um, a lot of pigment in there. So it floats and gives you a nice watercolor wash. You want it to look a watercolor wash like. And so the way to do that is wet in the wet, giving you a soft edge, lots of pigment floating. So you get granulation. Granulation is wonderful. It's the most wonderful thing about watercolor that you get a nice granule, the granules. I'm hoping that um, Holbein comes out with a granular pigment um, paint. Um, so it's really granulated. And now you see through the dress right there. So you see the other dress coming this way, the other part of the dress coming this way. And this, I want all soft edge first. I want to do all the soft edges in there first. And this is my medium tone. And then it's going to be dark. The wall behind it is darker. So I don't have to stop right here. I can go right into the back wall too. And work it until that dress is done. Don't sit there and, you know, it's kind of neat um, doing these videos because I'm practicing myself and I'm just talking to myself, basically. <laughs> um, I'm basically talking to myself, trying to figure out how to do this because I've never done this painting before. But by, you know, just talking to you about it, then it, it shows me what I should be doing. And then her leg right here is a little bit darker. So maybe when you're um, painting, pretend like you're talking to and teaching people. <laughs> and maybe it'll help you um, in your in your idea of how to do it. Because it's helping me. I mean, it's helping me to talk about what I'm doing. And then I know what I should be doing. Sometimes I, you know, I kind of, you know, when I'm painting I'm by myself, I actually think about, you know, you have to think a little bit about which step to take. And I don't really think about how I'm putting the paint down. You get to a point where... You don't think about those things, you know, there's certain ways like how to apply more pigment. Um, I know I have to apply more pigment when I want the pigment to stop at a certain a certain way, you know. And there's a little bit of opaqueness. See the opaqueness I just put in there? So that's a little bit more white in there. And but it's floating and so it's gonna look really it's gonna look really cool. So her leg and her dress is almost done. And I can put a little I can even use some opaques in it some opaqueness to it to make it look like it's coming down. Watch this. Look, I'm just going to take some opaque paint and it'll look like the the folds are coming right into the water here. Because it's, it's putting, using it on wet surface and using opaque colors 
um, it's, it makes it look more, um, you know, it's just neat. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it, but it looks neat when you're using opaques on top of um, transparency. And I know a lot of um, a lot of um, a lot of the societies don't want that for their like transparent society doesn't want that, but I find that to be very interesting to um, do this use opaques on top of transparent, and because we actually kind of use opaques on top of dark opaques, right? We use dark opaques like this, and really dark opaques are the same thing, which is really they don't um, say that it is though. You know, I was talking to somebody at TWSA, and I was saying, you know. Black paint is also opaque if you think about it because um, you're covering up a white piece of paper. So it really is opaque also, but it's the white that, you know, they're, they're concerned about, but all good. You do what you want to make your paint look good. All right. So there are her legs and there's the dress. And so let's move on. That got a little bit too light there and I don't like that color. Um, it should be more in the orange field, so I'm going to put a little bit of orange in there. Put a little bit more orange in that. I don't like the lightness of the pink there, because it's, and again, it's more orange, and it'll, it'll match her hair. It'll match her red hair. Could it be an illustration board instead of a watercolor? Crescent makes them both so similar, and I know when I use the illustration board for gouache and it's too wet, it will do that. It could be, you, you know, you're actually, you made me right because it's doing a weird thing to it. Oh, I, I have the piece too that doesn't show what it is. You know, you know, I think you're right. I think it may be illustration board. Because I, did, I cut off this piece and a part where it doesn't have the actual what it is. All right, so now let's go into our window here. That's our next lightest part, big area of light. I'm gonna take some um, gray on gray. This is um, this is a gray, actually a color, gray on gray it's called. And I'm just gonna go in here and it's light, like the background. So get a little bit of blue in there like I put in before. And just, um, just kind of, looks like you can see your head right there side of the window again it's it's a reflection of what's happening right there basically it's it's reflecting that part and so let's just put that in there real quickly get that out of the way those panels are going to be darker so I can go right into that and then next will be my dark darks my really dark darks and so I'm going to use my big brush and just get in there with some really nice darks. And uh, what I'll do is I'll work from this way across. Let's do that right now. So I'm just going to take my big brush, a one and one quarter inch brush. So remember, that was started with a tint, then we went to a wash. Tints and wash are different. Tints are a lot of water, a lot of water, a little pigment. Washes are lots of pigment with lots of water. <laughs> and controlling your pigment in the large amounts of water. All right, so how are we gonna get some really dark darks? Let's start out with a brown. Some, some brown, it's kind of a purpley brown. So red, red's complement is green. So blue and yellow, right? And so blue and orangey yellow will make, hopefully, will make it kind of grayish. And so we're going to start here with a nice dark. And if I feel it's, it's swinging a certain way I don't like, like it's a little bit too warm, put some cool in there. So I added some purple to that. Some lavender, I mean, which is purple. I'm just going to go in there and just go down there, make some of the board things. The panel right there is a little bit more orangey, so a little bit of orange gray. Put that right into the panel of the window. And I'm not wetting it first. I'm wetting it as I go along, basically. I'm wetting I'm wetting the board as I go along. And parts that are wet already, they're going to be bleeding, which I like. I like to have some parts just bleed away. And if it's really thick paint, it's not going to bleed too far, right? It's not going to bleed too far because there's so much paint on my brush that I'm not going to worry about it. A little bit of that, um, a little bit of that 
bleed that it's going on that makes it look more look more watercolor like now if you're doing it hyper realism then that would be a problem you know you don't want to do that a little bit more blue right here i'm going to just go in here now lots of pigment lots of pigment and um there's another board right there so the window is that's the edge of the window oops let me see what we got here Let's get a bit warmer with that, a little bit more red in my dark. And come down, and that's, that's too big a brush. Why not use, see, a, a half inch fits right that size. So use brushes that work for this, what you're doing. I always tell my students, you know, they ask me, which brush are you, which brush? Um, it, it all depends on what you're doing. So look at the object, and is it like, this is better with a half inch, because I can go straight down or straight up. And just put it in. Lots of water, lots of paint in my brush. Once the water's down, then I can go in and um, create other um, colors in there. I can put some water. And put other colors, like I'm going to put some orange from her, reflects in from her hair. It's going to reflect right there. You know, and I, it really does happen. I, I wore a shirt one time when I was doing outside. Uh, plain air thing and it was in the evening and the sun was going down and I had a red shirt on and when I looked at the video later on it was amazing how much of my red shirt shone onto the canvas or the paper that I was working on which was white it was crazy how much um, it just turned pink the whole the whole canvas the whole paper was pink because of my shirt so that's reflected light that's reflected light and so that why don't we just go right into her right into her jacket from this edge because I don't need to see where the edges of that and so let's make this a nice cool color jacket a little bit of warmth on the one side cool on the other I'm not gonna determine yet where the arm is I'm just gonna make this all dark and um, let this all float together make a beautiful wash you can get some reflected light in there too and top part their hair is up there so let's put that right there a little bit of orange down here we're gonna have a little bit of blue so i'm putting it on pretty thick because to make something this dark you got to use a lot of paint you got to use a lot of paint to make it that dark and have it stay that dark if it's if you have a lot of pigment or a lot of water and a, just a small amount it looks dark right now but once it dries it's going to get so light and then you're going to kick yourself because you didn't get that nice wash in the first step first step washes one step washes are the what you want to shoot for do it in one do it in one wash instead of trying to get it in a couple washes don't build your darks get your darks right away and that doesn't mean you have to use it thick or um like oils you can still have it like see how wet this is you can still have it wet and with a lot of pigment but just make sure then you put like warm pigment cool pigment inside there letting it float and use a lot of it because it will change it will change up so I'm putting blue in there. See, I'm just going to take it and put it right in there. And just get that wash done. This is probably one of the hardest things for my students to do is to sit there and get dark enough with their with their um, amount of pigment. Because they get done and they go, oh, I just didn't, it got so light, it got so light. Well, yeah, it, it is what happens. It does get really light because of the amount of pigment you use. But if you work slow, you know, work slow and just get it done um, as you're going along like this. I mean, look how slow I'm going. I'm kind of going slow and I'm, I'm just making it right the first time. So I don't have to go back in again. It'll be done then. And like the super detailed stuff, I'll get in there later. Um, this is just a big area of dark. I had kept a little bit of light right there because I didn't put the light down first, but that's okay. This will, I can put that in afterwards, a little bit of, a little bit of light there. I can even rub it out if I lost it. I can rub that out too. This part down here, maybe I'll get a little bit darker. All right, so that's, the bigger the washes, the easier they are to do. And so that's what you're, that's why I do them like that. Because they're easier and they look better. A big wash is easy and fun to do. Because you can make it nice and wet in the wet. You can let things float. That's what I'm going to do down here now. I'm going to bring that, that wash right into the bottom here. And this this wall is very, um, you know, textured with all kinds of stuff. And so 
I'm going to do a really textured kind of looking wall back there and try to get all things wet in the wet. So I'm wetting with any color right now. It doesn't matter what I wet it with. And then I'll come in here and take, let's see what happens. I put some blue in there. And how do I get the texture? Do I tap it down, put a, throw salt in there? What do I do to make that look like really textury? And that's where it all becomes personal on how you do your big washes and how you get your texture. Do I use the paper to get the texture? Do I spatter it later? You know, what is it that you do with washes to make them look much like they're, it's your wash? There's many artists who have their own kind of style of washes and they always use like salt or they always use spatter or they use something that makes it look like their kind of wash. Now I can go into the dress um, later. I don't have to, I can make this a hard edge and I'll, I'll, I'll soften up later because I don't want to kind of go in there right now. Well, maybe, let's see. I think I should go in there now. Oh, it's still a little damp, so that's not a good idea. So let's do that later. We'll come in there later. And... And like I said, we can spatter. I have to use some paper towel or I go real close and just take take some colors, some orange. Take it pretty thick and tap it, get some. I want it to look textured. I can take my fingers and I can put water in with the fingers. I can go like this and just kind of spatter it with a little bit of water to get texture, right? It needs to look very textury. I don't want this to be a hard edge all the way around, so that's gonna come later on. I'll come back in here and I'll, I'll dull that down. How about lifting stuff out? Lift it out. Since it probably isn't a um, watercolor board, it's, if, it's, if it is illustration board, I can lift it out really easily because it's just sitting on top. And so I can take my brush, make it thirsty, go back in here and tap a little bit and it can make, the te uh, make it look textury that way too. Ask questions if you need to know something. I'm here to answer questions. Put that in a little bit dark. And thanks for um, liking the video. Make a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't like it. Either way, I get um, <laughs> either way it gives me points and stuff. So, like it or not, um, thumbs up or thumbs down, it's all good. Now I gotta make sure I get a texture like this too. And so whatever I did over there, I gotta do over here. So I gotta tap over here a little bit. What kind of wash do you do? That's what the question is. What, how do you do your washes? Because there's basically only two washes available to you when you're working with watercolor with just brushes. Either um, you do a wet and a wet, wet and dry, and then there's either a tint it's either a tint or a wash, one or the other. It's one or the other. A tint is a lot of water with a little bit of pigment. A wash is a lot of water and also a lot of pigment. And so it's one of those two. And how you put it down, unless you're, unless you're using an airbrush, that's maybe the third way. But if you're using a brush, <coughs> basically you're putting it down two ways. Two ways, and that's it. And then there's techniques. And then, you know, what, what's your technique? What kind of technique do you get for different things? Do you make it very flat everything? Does everything become really, really, um, really soft edged? Are you high key? Do you make everything really high key? Dylan Pierce, I'm going to meet him in Canuga when uh, I can't wait to meet him. He does the best high key paint I've ever seen. Look him up. Um, Dylan Pierce. And um, God, his stuff is just amazing. I have never seen anybody do high key paintings as well as that, as well as this guy does. Um, I just recognized um, his painting. I always wondered who it was, and I see that he's going to be teaching in Canuga, and so I can't. I, w I would love to take his class myself um, because he just does these high key paintings of animals and people that are just phenomenal, just phenomenal. Look him up, Dylan Pierce. I think I put him in my, in the, one of the. Um, Artist of the Week, I think, not too long ago. All right, let's put this a little dark here. <coughs> All right, so I think we have that kind of nice and dark. Now i got to spatter over here because it has to match a little bit, right? We have to get that little matching. And so what did I, I say? I spattered this orange in here. So I just take my brush. I tap it on another brush. 
And for this, you don't have to cover up as much because I'm tapping it straight down. And there are little dots here, but that's okay too. I'll tap it down with my brush also. I'll just kind of tap it down in there. Gives you a nice little, nice little details of... Well, let me put it over it. It is getting... I want to, I want to do some spattering. So I'm going to take some paper towel. Put it over area of her. And then go a little bit more crazy with my spattering. Maybe a little red spatter. And aim it this way. Put some on her dress like it's seeing through. That's fine. Give it a nice wash. This is just a cement wall that's really old and is collapidated. Is that a word? Collapidated? <laughs> <laughs> I'm making up words again. All right, and so there's the wall. Now let's get our smaller detail darks. I'm going to still go over here on the left, and there's, it looks like there's a lot of blue in this, in this behind the window. And then we'll put a little bit of blue and purple. Just wisp it on there real quickly. It looks like her face is shadowed in here, kind of like shadowed, so I'm just going to do that real quickly. Like the back of her head, kind of, and then her shoulders right here. And then the same thing, this is really dark here. So let's make that really dark. Take a dark blue and just mix it on here. Look at all this nice dark gray right there now. A dark gray, just put it into your palette with all the colors and you're going to get a nice dark gray. And it's not mud. Stop saying you're doing mud. No, it's not mud. It's not mud at all. Mud is when I go over and over painting a thousand times and it's just not working and I'm just not getting it right. And I keep on not eliminating the paint so you're just getting a bunch of everything together. That's mud. But making grays in your palette, that's not mud. That is just grays. It may be a muddy color, like it's, um, it looks like mud. Because mud is gray, basically. Dark through here. Oh, the water spatter too. Yeah, I got to do the little water spatter here. A little fleckled water spatter. Spatter. <laughs> oh, look at it. Isn't this nice? This little window reflection. I love window reflections and stuff. It's like water doing water reflections. It's like a mirror. Now we'll do a little bit of the orange in her face here. Smear a little bit of it in there. Smear, smear a little bit of it in there. And I don't have to make it look exactly like that. It's not a mirror. I want it to just so it has that image like, oh yeah, that's right there. She's right there. Just opposite what you see in, uh, on the other side. Okay. Now we can go in and do our window panes. That's a, right, basically the next big thing. So the window pane, I'll take all this nice dark, and if I, what I can do is I can use my finger along the edge to make a nice straight edge. I'm just going to use my finger on there in the side, and just going to go straight down. Go to my brush and start, and don't stop. <laughs> uh, a little bit of an angle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's a little bit of an angle. Oh well. Let's straighten it out a little bit here. That's okay. It's not totally straight up and down. And put this one in. And once it's wet, you can go back in with other colors. I'll edge it out with a little bit of orange where the sun is and where my center of interest is. And then another, another one going down. Take my dark colors here. I don't have to pick up other colors. I don't want to pick up other colors. That I do. I'm going to not make new ones. I'm just going to take what's in my palette already. I know I've used it, so it's going to be fine there. I know it will be fine there. That's why you leave your, your palette dirty when you're doing one painting. You don't clean it every, after every wash because you need to save that color for later on. And then this goes across. 
I should be doing the lighter ones first. But oh well. <laughs> like, see the back ones? Those are lighter, and those you do first so they can go over them, right? But no, not me. All the things you got to think about. But it's not that big a deal. Light to dark. It's just one of those things. Watercolors work light to dark. I could also use my smaller round brush so it doesn't, I don't have to use my flat brush. I like flat brushes for things like that though. You know, it's nice because I can, it just holds more paint. Now these out here are going to be a little bit more gray. So I'm going to get a little blue in there. So I'm going to put a little blue into my mess here. And I'm just going to take that and just real lightly put them across. And there's a big mess up here of stuff. So I'm just going to put that in there. See how I went over it now? And so I'll go back in with the darker part and go right over that again. That wasn't that big a deal, right? No, it's not that big a deal. And it looks like this is a little bit dirty, this um, window here. It's not super clean and you don't see the background very much. And so let's put a little bit of a, a tint. What is a tint? Remember what a tint is? Lots of water <laughs> with a little bit of pigment. So I should have done that first too, but I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little tint of a little bit of I'll take a little bit of blue and put in this mess here just take some blue put it in here and then just lightly it's still wet so it's gonna blur it but that's okay I'm gonna take that right over it and make it a little bit messy I'm gonna mess it up a little bit because it's too clean I mean otherwise it's too clean it's not that window is dirty and you can't see through it and it's double pane because it slid she slid open the window so it's okay to get make it dirty It makes it look more real. Things look more real when they're like, not everything so perfectly, you know, being a little bit looser with things is, is great. You know, make it, doesn't have to be so perfect, everything. Here are these lines over here. Just go right in there, make a few lines for the windowsill. And if I, let's say I wanted to use gouache afterwards, I could clean up that, some of that part too, by using gouache on top of that again. You know, so it's not, it's kind of neat to have a dirty look and then just go back in with a clean wash and maybe go with thicker paint. This looks kind of nice. I'm just going to do the same thing over here with her dress. I'm just going to dirty it up a little bit and bring in the wash over it real quickly. So we're getting, I mean, we're getting a look of, um, you know, the dress being transparent here. This is a little bit too light yet for the dress. And so I'll do the same thing I just did with the window. I'll go over it with a little bit of, um, with a little bit of blue, dull it down a little bit and then make it a little bit darker and put a tint, a tint. Do you remember what a tint is? <laughs> I keep on saying that, but I want you to realize there's a tint and there's a wash. A tint is a lot of water, hardly any pigment. And it will not affect the wash that much. It's going to just come down wet it again and then just apply a little bit of blue a little bit of darkness to it and then tone it into the background so the line is already there and so i can just kind of tint it and later on if i needed to get those lines back i can make a dark speck right into that too bring my background maybe spatter a little bit let's take some black and some purple and some blue this looks like something really dark a little brown get this dark back in here because I kind of lightened that up a little bit and of course I've got to do what I've got to spatter because if I don't spatter now it's not going to get the same look again so a little bit of spatter again and again and again go right into the dress I'm going to spatter in the dress too what the heck I want that kind of look like it's just floating downwards let's put that in there a little bit so it's out of focus how do you make something out of focus? You soften the edge and make it look out of focus. So I don't want to give attention to it. Let it bleed into the background. I know you're waiting for me to lose those shoes, aren't you? Those shoes are going to be everything. <laughs> the shoes and her hair, that's going to make the whole painting, let me tell you. And so that's what we're doing right now. And so, uh, let me 
sure the shoe's a little bit higher up. Let me see what they are. So, one second. I just got to look. So, they're laced all the way to the top. There's the edge right there. And then there's a... Okay. You can see into the boot in the one side. So, you can see into the boot right there. And so, I'm basically going to use black because they are black boots. I'm going to start out with black and then I'll put other colors in there. So there's a little opening right here. You can see into the boot. She does have some socks on. They look like they're red. I'll make them orange. Make your socks a little bit orange in there. Thick. That's like an insider boot right here. And then the boot itself is going behind. This one's going behind. And so there's the laces, and so I'll take some laces, make it dark. That's the back one, and there's a lace right here, a little bow. And then the, I'll do these laces on this, on this boot. Let's see the light coming, shining through there. That all looks great. And then her, um, the sole on her, sole on her boot here, and the heel. And it's a mixture of black with a little bit of blue that I'm done here. There's blue in there. There's black in there. There's purple in there, brown in there. Just use it all. It's just dark. It's really, really dark. And then the edges will be, you know, shiny a little bit. There'll be rim lighting so that you can do. Anything that's just totally dark also will have shininess to it. Like boots are leather. So I'm sure there's a little shininess to them. So that you can put in afterwards by taking out or putting a, some white in there, light in there. Look at that nice boot. All right. So the thing right there. hand let's do a work a little bit on her hand I'll put a little reflection in there too I always reflect a little bit of something in there make your socks a little bit nicer if they're not crunkled up you don't have to get the dirt on the knee like she has in the picture <laughs> we, can, we can keep her clean um, actually there's more of a shadow on her leg right here it's a little bit darker but I'm going to keep it where it is. I think it's okay. I think um, we're going to put some light in there later too. With some opaques. Now we're going to get her hand. This is part of her hand. It's writing. And so this side is the dark part. It does cast a shadow on the side of the book. And so let's take a little bit of gray on the side of the book. Or pad or whatever she's writing on. Maybe it's maybe it's a um, iPad. She's writing, <laughs> and it's a it's a stylist. And then this will be her shadowing from her hand on the book. And then we got her fingers. Fingers are in the light area, so let's make that a little bit lighter this side. And then the stylist. The stylist is dark. Or the pencil, or whatever she's writing with. And there's there's what she's writing with. And now, yeah, this, this is going to have to be a little bit darker, I think. Yeah, we'll do that later. Let's do her hair now. All right, so we have the light part, but now we're going to get, we're going to go with the light parts of the hair first. And so light orange on the edges. Now, if it was like black hair, um, it still would have some color. It would be maybe um, black, black hair would be like blue reflections. Um, you can also put warmth in there too, like I, um, the optical scatter. You can make orange anywhere with the sun. But, um, and blonde would be the same thing like this. It would be yellow on the side. It would just be not as orangey. It would be more of a brownish, beige color for, for blonde. So a little bit more red as it gets darker. And 
and th they almost made her hair up up here, but I, I just let it down. I let her hair down. I didn't put it up in a bun. It almost like the, the um, AI made it into a bun, but I took it, I took it off the bun. <laughs> and then I want a really dark, dark right back here. You know, so... And the edges will be, you know, lighter, right? The edges are going to be lighter. I'm just going to go down here. And then where the skin starts, that's where you got to you gotta stop and put more, more orange right there next to the skin, the hair. Small brush to get the, the small hairs. A real sharp brush. And then the hair that's behind here is really light so let's do the let's go let's get this done first let's get this done right here first this is the bottom of her neck let's go back into some pinkish pinkish orange makes a salmon -y color a little bit of opera never heard anything opera is a super bright pink that with orange will make a nice this will be your, take some of her hair, put it on top here. This is the bottom of her chin. So let's do her chin before we do the hair down there. Underneath her lip, underneath her nose. Her cheek color. shadow the shadow in her eye socket you can do the like the eye eyelashes later that's just black and we're gonna put a little bit of a we can make her lips red we can our little warmth to their lips and then the hair behind like underneath here I'm gonna make it kind of yellowish yellow first with a little bit of orange it's shining through back here it's not going to be dark dark it's going to be shining through the hair but then there's the edge of the hair you got to just make the edge of the hair so basically your hair is going to be a little bit darker than the side of her face so that then her face will stick out and her hair is darker I could have gone with exactly what's there, but there's so much hair in front of her face that, and you could do that too. I mean, you can do that too. I'm just going to rub this all together and um, later on, then I'll go back in and kind of manipulate that a little bit more. I think I am going to have to make the bottom of her chin here or her neck a little darker. Covers her hair, maybe the top of her neck there. So I'll wait till it dry, and I'll get like the hair a little bit more identified, like exactly what's going on with the hair. And if there's parts that I want to just um, look out of focus, then just soften it, basically. Maybe I give her a collar right here too. And now I also have to make this a little bit darker. Use my brush here. It's right here. It just seems a little bit darker and it goes down. I don't want to get rid of the violet though. I'm going to keep the violety pinkish look to this area here. So I'm getting hard edges. Why? Because it's dry, right? So, but I can soften them as I go along here now. I'll soften them with water. And so keeping a couple of those hard edges. And then I'll make this a little bit darker here to look like it's see-through, but show the edge. Yeah, 
You're right, the size of her face doesn't look like it matches there. Looks too small, like I need to go in there. Yep, you're right. Thanks for that. It seems like this is really short right here. This part of her face it should go down to here. So that's going to have to wait until it dries. And then I'll go in there and re-sketch re it. And so how do you take care of that? You go like this. You rub that part out. You go redraw it. And then you repaint it. And so I'm going to take my water. It looks way too small. Her head looks way too small for that. It looks like her chin should go way down here. And that happened probably because me changing the hair making the hair bigger and so i'll go down there and just come bring her chin way farther down and her nose farther down bigger good catch i, I almost didn't see that well, i kind of saw that in my and my looking up at my screen i'm thinking oh that that head is way that face is way too small for her for her body so see how now it's just blurred everything's blurred there so i have to wait for that to dry and um, then I'll just redraw it. And that's going to take way too long because I have to stop in four minutes. So I'll do that and you'll see it in, in, in when I get it done. And I post it. You'll see it posted. Because i got to go in there and wait for it to dry and then redraw it so it does look good. And then here on the edges, this, this, these are too light. And so I'm going to just take a little bit of blue. You know, the face is all about drawing, right? It's about the size, the shape, and the, and the drawing. And so that's something you don't want to rush either. You don't want to just rush that through because drawing is number one. Yeah, I've always told you drawing is number one most important thing. And so Yep, so that, yeah, the face, I'll have to make the face nicer. And right here, her, um, also the her jacket here that has a little collar. I go in there with more details too. So after it dries, I will show it. I will show it in the um when I go to post it on my sites, on my social media sites, and you'll see what I had done. But yeah, it's all wet right now, and the eye will still be right where it's at. The eye will still be right here, but the nose will have to be bigger, and the chin will come down there. And that I will pencil in. And also the very last thing I'm going to do is the background a little bit. And basically it'll be all close to done. This will be the windows. And so I'm going to take rectangular shape brush, flat brush to get these windows in. Because they're just rectangles, right? Okay, I'm just making them up a little bit. And then there's a little bit of short part right here mess it up a little bit make it like it's you know, this upper part here i'm not sure what that is and there's even an angle part here let me put a little i can put the windows on the side there and that will be done for today and so that dries and i'll be here in my studio fixing that the face I like the dress. The rest, I like to have the dress turned out. It looks pretty good. Got a couple of lines here. And one more thing on this side. We have some windows on this side too. And a little bit of something happening. We make this really light though. This building up there. Make it just a tint of something. Tint, remember. So today all about tinting. Tinting and washes. The difference between them. So that was a, kind of a big thing I was talking about. And so remember, remember that. And there's a window right here too. All right. All right, guys. I think that's going to be it for today. Look for it on my, my social media to see the fixing of the face. Um, I, it's going to take a while if I had to dry and it's gotta be totally bone dry to go in there and redraw it. Cause I gotta use my pencil. I don't want to scribe into the paper, but never go into a paper that's damp because you, if you take your pencil, even it'll just make, it'll scar it. And so you don't want to do that. All right. And even with the face like that, it doesn't look bad, but I definitely have to get the chin in there and get the drawing right again. So let me work on that.
and we will hopefully see you on Thursday and get my newsletter on Tuesdays. And so sign up for my newsletter if you don't get it. And we'll be, I think this week we'll be drawing or painting. I'm thinking a dog. I think we'll do a portrait of a dog. I haven't done animals in a while or at least um, pets. And so um, I think we're going to do some kind of dog or cat or something like that. All right. So have a great rest of the Sunday, the rest of the weekend. And we will see you on Thursday here on YouTube. All right. Have a great Sunday, guys. Bye-bye.